high swinging. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Emma Claire, and you are listening to the Prohibition Radio Show. It's May, and the UK is still in lockdown, unfortunately. Uh, this is really sad because we can't run our club nights. But on the other hand, it's kind of been good for us because it's given us time to focus on the radio show. So for the very first time, I'm about to hand over to Prohibition resident DJ Nanook, who took his time out of his busy day uh, to speak to Ed from the Speaker Freaks about all things electro swing, um, DJing, production, what he does in his spare time, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, sit back, relax for the next half hour and enjoy your finding out more about the Speaker Freaks. Hey buddy, do you like to swing? Come with me. You're listening to Emma Claire. The best of all things, swinging that prohibition radio, 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 radio. Yes, mate. How's it going? Hey, Chris. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Good. Doing all right. Excellent. Thanks for joining us on Prohibition Radio. Happy to do it. What, what time is it over there? Are you on like what noon? Yep, noon. Just had lunch. Nice. Eight o'clock for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. What was on the menu? Uh, ravioli. We ordered, we ordered in from a, a local restaurant. You ordered in lunch on a Friday. Good on you, mate. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Ed, uh, tell the listeners a little bit about how the Speaker Freaks concept came about. Sure. Um, so Speaker Freaks started out uh, about almost 15, gosh, I can't even remember, 15 or 20 years ago where I was just kind of experimenting with synthesizers and, and, and making techno music. And uh, I, I got a bandmate and a manager at the time. He was doing both. And he coined the name Speaker Freaks. And uh, we started kind of doing the rave circuit. And then he decided we should DJ and we learned to DJ. And we kind of became this whole producer slash DJ packet. And, and that was sort of simultaneously, it wasn't like, producing first or DJing first or just sort of developed organically from that initial sort of rave scene? Yeah, because at first we were doing live PA at the rave scene. So we were taking our stance and doing everything live. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, we, it was a lot of break beats that we were doing at the time. And then uh, he said, if we want to keep doing this, we should really learn how to DJ. Cause it's more accessible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was Stop like, carrying okay, around all that heavy kit with you, and uh, and <laughs> exactly, <laughs> no roadies needed, nothing. Yeah. Nice. So you're from San Francisco, right? Yes. From what I've gathered, it's it's quite a different scene over there to to what we have here. Is the music that you're playing niche, or is it quite readily available? Is it the sort of thing you'd hear in bars on a Friday, or is it a small scene over there? Well, the the swing side of things is niche here. Um, yeah. But the, the 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 house and, you know, the whole forum of floor beat is really popular here in San Francisco. House music is very popular. I've seen some big DJs on tour in your neck of the woods. I know, like, big weed visits regularly and, there's you know, there's, there's always, like, big progressive scene over there. But I assume that people are sort of branching out more and, you know, your sound is becoming more readily available for people. I've noticed that there are more swing DJs coming up here in the Bay area and in Los Angeles. And then I've noticed there's actually more events too starting to happen that feature electro swing. So it sounds like it's kind of starting to gain momentum here. That's nice. I think it sort of ebbs and flows across the globe because it's one of those strange genres that has been in and out of popularity for, for quite a while. And then yes. it, it will it will drop off, you know, maybe in London or something. It will drop off for a year or two. It will then spring up somewhere else, like Berlin or something like that. And you know, it's it's a very global scene. Are you affiliated with any nights? Do you promote or um, are you a resident at a venue? How does it work over there? I am part of a crew. At, they're called the Heavy Petting Zoo. Nice. And they're, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And their their whole thing is they have this this cart. It's like a, a a double decker bus deal, and it's just covered with furry uh, plush animals. It, it looks wild, and so people can get on top of the bus, and it's like a a stage where they can dance and be behind the DJ. And it's a wow. really good production. Yeah, it's a really fun, and we're one of their resident DJs. That sounds like a great place to uh, 
to play. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. <laughs> I quite like residencies because you almost get to know the crowd intimately, don't you? You've got your regulars, you've got, you know, like almost like a bit of a family build up around the night. And I think residents yes. have a very different atmosphere to when you guest somewhere. You know, if, yes. if, you, if you've sold a gig out in a, in a foreign city, yes, people might know your music and they're, you know, they're buying a ticket to see you, but they don't know yeah. you like week in, week out, you know. And I think as a DJ, it sort of forces you to be a little bit more creative as well. You can't play the same tunes every Friday, can you? That's yeah. that's true. I have to change up my set every time I have a gig with them. Exactly. I, I quite like that. I think my first residency, I was it, it, vinyl-based, and I was about I, I was literally too young to be going in bars because, you know, the drinking law here is 18. It's 21 with you, is it? Yeah, 21 here. So I'd sort of had a, a few DJ lessons with my brother-in-law and I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to see if I can get a set here. And I ended up playing like the Students' Union, which is like affiliated with the university. Uh, I just turned 16, my first gig. And I had, like, oh, I, had wow. about, I had about 10 records. And they said, do you know what? Will you come back next week? And I'm there thinking, well, I've got about five, five pounds in my pocket, 10 records. I'm going to have to get creative here. And I... <laughs> you know, play the b-sides play them again you know <laughs> wow so listen, mate, a little bit about your production you've had a bunch of number one releases on beatport which i spotted well done on that um i don't know if you've noticed this but i find beatport categorizes music pretty strangely you think so, so? so yeah so <laughs> s- certain tracks that i like really enjoy and i might say oh that's quite like progressive house for example or something mm-hmm. like that it, it will categorize as electro or it might categorize as new disco or something like that and the pigeon oh holes, yeah the pigeonholes never seem to sort of match how would you describe yourself because i've seen beatport's definition of your music how would you describe it i would describe it as every genre because we love all <laughs> genres <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah and the, the, the problem with that is they have a hard time categorizing a lot of what we do because we like to plan <laughs> everything um, like some people, some, there's no electro swing genre on B-Port, but I imagine we would be in there for sure. Yeah. But we definitely, we definitely, our favorite right now is feature house and tech house. And, um, I do notice sometimes they do miscategorize things, but I think that's, it's just par for the core when you're trying to label things. There's so yeah. much room for interpretation. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah you, you, you've hit the nail on the head with what I was alluding to there. There's no electro swing categories on, on, on there or or other websites. To be fair, and it does there get should be. You see people like then you know labeling it as maybe like electro house, which obviously to the strict, you know, electro yes. house fans from years ago, it's not. Uh, and then yeah. obviously some people categorize it as glitch and yeah, glitch hop and whatnot. But again, that's not electro swing. And there's a lot of crossover, but it doesn't seem to fit into its own, which is interesting. Yeah, and that's the thing about Electro String right now is that I feel like every time I hear somebody release a new Electro String <laughs> song, it's just I can hear all kinds of genres. It's not just one thing. It's always I I hear the blends of everything. It's like an amalgamation. Yeah, yeah. It's almost interesting because if you go back to the early jazz roots. That was all yes. they were doing, weren't they? It was a, an amalgamation of a bunch of different stuff, and uh, they were they were pioneering in that respect. So I suppose that gives it a pioneering feel, really. Totally, totally, yeah. And I think that's for for San Francisco in general. That I think that's people are starting to hear that, and they're like, "Wow, this is this is something that has a little of everything in it." And I, I'm hoping that that's what makes people catch on more here, because I remember when. The first introduction to a lot of people here in the States for Electro String was that uh, Medicano song. I don't know if you remember that song. Uh, yeah. Da, 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 Medicano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good and, singing, mate. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and we were all like, whoa, what is this? And uh, it, we fell in love with it here. But then that was it. There was nothing else that came out after that that piqued everyone's interest here on the on. Mm. Yolanda Be Cool, I think, did that track. I was just trying to remember who it was. That's, yep, that's the one. So, random train of thought. This wasn't one of the questions I'd written down to ask you. Following on from that train of thought, do you think that that makes it more accessible 
when it you know if it, if it has crossovers with stuff that people recognize because i reckon there was yeah. a lot of people that would have got into electro swing through hearing stuff like you know that yolanda be cool um maybe like piano and other sort of really like edm almost crossover stuff yeah it has to appeal to the senses of what people are already like out here yeah and then that's what we're doing right is our electro swing is a little different because we're using a lot of the genres that people really like so we're mixing tech house and future house and and bass house I, and i noticed a, a, a lot of other electro swing artists are doing that too which i think is going to really catapult this sound into mm. more of a limelight who are like the big techno artists over there that you sort of they're popular touring the ones that are getting like gigs regularly over there uh the dirty bird crew claude von stroke they're based here in san francisco and they're huge yeah. they're just touring all over the united states don't yeah. know if they go to Europe or not, but... Um, so, less than a week ago, you had a release on Ragtime. Yeah. Banger, mate. Really good. Thank I, you. I actually missed the release, but I was catching up with it today, and uh, yeah, dead impressive, mate. Good on you. We've had Cat in the Hat play Prohibition a couple of times. I think like maybe three or four times. And, yes. Um, My it's, label quite a dis- it's quite a distinctive sound, you know, for, for Ragtime and... You know, there's sort of similarities. I suppose with any label, you know, they, they, they want to attract artists and push a certain sort of sound. And I was wondering yes. whether when you set out to contact Ragtime or however they contacted you, was we, did you specifically have them in mind with that production or was it just something like, I've been influenced by these guys and this is the way we went with the track? Originally, um, so one of the label a rs Duke Skellington, who did uh, uh, a set for for you guys, he oh, yeah. yeah he came up from LA. He lives in Los Angeles. He came up to San Francisco, and we had coffee, and he was telling me how we had done a remix of Sing Sing Sing, and it got really popular, and that's how they heard of us. And, right. and we weren't we weren't specifically electro swing. We just dabbled in it, so we had a couple songs here and there that were like that. And so Ragtime approached us and said, you know, we would love more releases. And I thought, okay, let's make a few more electro swing songs and then we'll release it. Ended up being two albums. And so now two albums later, this is specifically what we're doing. And when I, when I, I, I knew I was making something specifically for them, I did want to kind of be similar vibes to what they're doing. And I was already a fan of Electric Swing Circus and um, Cat in the Hat. I had already known, and even Duke, I had already known all what they were doing and I'd heard them. Yeah we were all doing the same thing and i thought oh wow this is amazing i'm i'm so happy to be connected with them so yeah i kind of did you know blend a little bit of what they're doing to so we can be a cohesive label i think that's a you've hit the nail on the head there and i think that labels that have that cohesive sound and you know bit of a brotherhood or sisterhood they have you know more longevity Mm -hmm. You, you can sort of almost cultivate a bit of a culture and people know right if i'm going to buy a ragtime records track i know what i can expect you're not going to buy a ragtime records track you know and it's going to be progressive house or dub you know <laughs> right you, right yeah you're going to buy it and you know what you're getting don't you yeah you're not going to get a hip-hop record all of a sudden <laughs> or something yeah yeah exactly totally exactly. totally um so listen you had a, a few upcoming dates in the uk didn't you I did, yeah. I assume I was really that they're excited. no longer happening. Not till next year. Not till next year. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry sorry to hear that, mate. And I'm sure there'll be lots of people listening to this that are uh, upset to hear you won't be visiting this uh, this year anyway. So what's the score then, if you can tell us? Has it been postponed until when this is blown over? Are you waiting to see what the landscape looks like before you rearrange? Yeah, I mean... I'm 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 actually gonna just wait to see what the word is. One of a uh, one of our gigs was with Stringamajig, which is devastating that they they can't have their show. Yeah. Um. But yeah. but we plan on we plan on coming next year for sure. Um. Hopefully all this is over by then. I mean, yeah, that's the plan. We're just waiting on the word. I spoke to a few of our crew before making this call. You know, many people were upset that you weren't coming over. So, I think. When you do make it over, there's going to be lots of people who have been eagerly anticipating it, and we'll just have it twice as hard, mate. <laughs> oh, I love that. That would be awesome. <laughs> it would be my first time, my first time ever in the UK. That so, I'm really looking forward to that. I've I've never been across the pond either, and uh, yeah, at some point yeah. I plan to. 
Um, listen, nice. let's talk a little bit about your production because I've had a few questions from some of our listeners. For the geeks out there, what do you use to produce? I use Logic. And are you strictly yeah. software at the moment or do you still include some of that early hardware that, you know, inspired you when you first started? Yeah, you know, for, for this album, I was able to use my my um, Roland, my old Roland synthesizer, but unfortunately it died halfway through. And oh, no. so, yeah, so like half of the album has it and then the rest I had to rely on software since. Well, some of the emulators, some of the software VSTs, you know, they are getting much better. Like, I remember when the early 303 emulators and stuff came out, this sounded like fake, you know. Yeah. It, it didn't have that same sort of depth of sound. But, you know, over the last 15 years, you, you, you certainly won't be able to tell the difference unless you're a mega geek, you know, so. Um, exactly. And with the, with the right plugins and, like, if I use Waves plugins, which emulate yeah. that analog warmth, tube sounds you can you can make it work yeah of course you can of course you can so for that was for the geeks for the creatives what's your thought process when you sit down in the studio to start producing do you just start noodling and banging out noise and see what happens or do you have like a set workflow are you pretty structured it's um you know it's a a little bit like a job because i'm obsessed and so what i do (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's really hard to peel me away from the studio what I, what I do typically is I imagine something or let's say I hear a song on the radio. I'm like, that's a pretty cool song. I want to do something like that. Or I just have an idea and then I try to flesh the idea out and it's usually just a melody. So I, I put a basic, basic beat, like just a kick drum. And then I really focus on trying to make a good bass line and a good melody and, and do that. But what we're doing now with, with the electro swing is um, my bandmate, he play, he's a live instrumentalist. He plays every instrument pretty much. And so I'll say, hey, can you think of a little ditty or a little you know, melody or something? And then he'll send it to me and then I'll, I'll work on it or we'll sing on it. And then we'll flesh out a, a fat beat to go with that little melody or, or that little song we wrote. So just our listeners there, you mentioned your bandmate, who is that? His name's Andy Robertson. And nice. I've known him since high school. He's always been a part of the project, has he? No, he what he joined us in 2015, I believe. Um, nice. But before that, it was me and another, the original bandmate who he retired from the music industry. Yeah. So then it was three of us and then the original bandmate left. And then now it's me and Andy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So we've had a question come in from Rue who dropped this on our Facebook page and She's curious, how do you spend your downtime? My downtime? I, yeah, I, think, she's alluding, I think she's alluding to quarantine, but uh, overall, what do you do to, uh, when you're not producing? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. What do I do when I'm not producing? You just, you just said you're obsessed, so it sounds like you don't do much else. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm having a hard time answering that. It's like when I'm sad, go produce. When I'm happy, go produce. During quarantine right now, I'm, I'm trying to work on my health. So I'm doing a lot of yoga and just, just trying to do calisthenics and, and take care of myself. And then I, this is cheesy, but I love to build Legos. And that nice. kinda, <laughs> it, gives me a, it gives me the same sense of flow like when I'm producing. And so I'm just like making a Lego. I, I, build like, I just recently built a little bridge of San Francisco and everything. And so that's, that's what I like to do to, to kind of I like step it. away from the studio. Yeah. I like it, mate. I like it. So uh, another Facebook question that's come in, Steve Ashcroft, DJ's under the name Captain Smash. I'm sure you'll see him. He's a, a regular on the northern scene when you come to UK. He'll probably, uh, he'll probably introduce himself. Guilty Pleasures tune, he's curious. What do you listen to outside of Electro Swing? Ah, um, I listen to a lot of synthwave and 80s music. Ooh. That was... Yeah, that was my original love was 80s music. I remember when I was growing up, it was just, I, I just loved all that. And especially from, from the UK, they had the best 80s music. And so, so I was just loving it. And yeah, Electro String happened because I found an old record at a pawn shop. It was old, I think it was Billie Holiday or Louis Armstrong. And I remember putting it on the record player, and being loving that little crackling sound and that old vintage sound. And so I liked Swing on the side, but... I love synth wave, synth pop, the cheesiest synth pop too. Nice. For <laughs> me, when I think that era, like 80s synth, 
it's hard not to get roped into sort of thinking of soundtracks. Yeah. Because there was yeah. so many, there was so many people, you know, doing sort of good quality soundtracks at the at the time, and obviously with the movie sort of industry being so big in that era, I always think of like John Carpenter, you know, like big so sort of synthy original soundtracks. And yeah, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Cheesy oh yeah, lines, cheesy synth lines. <laughs> Terminator had a really good soundtrack in the eighties. That was oh, a good one. classic. Classic. Yeah, John Carpenter was the the primo. John Carpenter was the best back then. Yeah, it's so many good films. Yeah. So yeah. another question who's come in here from Ben Campbell. He's asked for your most embarrassing DJ story. It's putting you on the spot, <laughs> in, eh? in the firing line. You know, I can vividly remember this, so I can answer this clearly. Uh, we were we, we were doing the whole gig and the crowd was pumping and we were having a good time and i stopped the wrong the wrong turntable you're not a and dj so, unless you've done that at least once mate. oh and somebody <laughs> shouted somebody shouted from the audience how embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> i was i was dead i didn't know what to do. Oh, that was brilliant you should have shouted <laughs> back yeah mate i know <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, my bandmate was so mad, and we just, he just pressed play again, and the track started from the beginning. But hey, what could you oh, do? that's fantastic! That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the chap who taught me to DJ, he always said that on vinyl. He said, "You're not a DJ unless you've taken the wrong needle <laughs> off the record." You know? oh. and and I think I think it's almost like a, a like a baptism that every DJ's got to go through at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Oh, so, man. Um, right, here we go. Last question from Facebook before we move on. What was your first proper DJ gig? And that's come from Sarah Whittle. My first proper DJ gig was, it was this outdoor gig. It was really small. And I remember it was very weird because there was all these moths flying around and they kept getting on the vinyl, on the turntable. So if, oh, no. as we were DJing, yeah, we were dealing with these moths, but... It was a fun gig, but it was a very problematic one because it wasn't really set up right. And we were not in a, a, a comfortable field that was full of moths everywhere. But <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my first DJ gig. You know what? Gigs like that, they teach you a lot, you know, because <laughs> yes. I think almost people who've come from the rave scene, they've had to either DJ, you know, dirty warehouses or outdoor parties or, you know, in a field or festival and they've had to deal with, you know, shoddy electrics or swarms of moths. It sort of, <laughs> yeah. it, it teaches you to think on your feet, doesn't it? It does. Like, I was, I was like, okay, I got to be real sensitive with this record when I try to <laughs> swoosh the moths away. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I've just spotted that was actually a double barrel question from Sarah on the end. She tags on any new swing talent to look out for that you can predict in 2020. Oh, who's, who's your one to watch? Who is my one to watch? I like DJ Mybor. Yeah. He's got, yeah, I, I play out a couple of his tracks, which I'm, I'm really digging. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a pretty good shout out, actually. I think Mybor, I've, I've increasingly seen more of him for the last couple of years, so definitely suspect, you know. Totally. Yeah, good skills. So quick, mate, rapid fire question time. Three biggest inspirations uh, in life and music. Three biggest inspirations. All right, let's see here. Um, I'll have to say Martin Gore was a big influence. Edgar Allan Poe was also a big influence. Ooh, yeah, the writer, like yeah. Book, yeah, yeah, he's good. I've, and, got, I've, um, actually, I've actually got his uh, his complete works on the shelf next to me. He's amazing. I, I was growing up, like I would just consume everything he was writing. I just thought this is so strange and entertaining. Do you know and, what? I got uh, introduced to him from that episode of The Simpsons, <laughs> the Halloween one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, a good episode. And someone someone pointed out, oh, it's like Edgar Allan Poe like a uh, parody. And I was like, who? Obviously, donkey years ago. I think I was a teenager still. And uh, yeah, <laughs> bought, bought his complete works, which I've got here. Yeah, never nice. <laughs> and he's third one, mate. Go on. Um, a third, I'll say my dad. Nice, nice, yeah. good he, choice. He's a hard worker. Uh, do you know what? My mum instilled a good hard work in ethic in me, and I, th I don't think it's something that's uh, to be overlooked, you know? Knowing how exactly. to put in the full day work on your passions. 
It's a big deal. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Rapid fire question number two: Whiskey, gin, or beer? Whiskey. Any favourite? Jameson. Jameson. Oh, Irish. <laughs> Irish. <laughs> yeah, I like. I like that one. Top three things you'd never go to a gig without. Uh, without my headphones, <laughs> uh, without my little, uh, I have a little hand fan because I sweat a lot <laughs> and <laughs> I hide under the decks and then fan myself and then <laughs> I back up to <laughs> and, uh, and a little towel. And a little towel, good skills. Do you know what? I've asked that question dozens of times. It's the first time mm-hmm. anyone's ever answered a fan. So yeah, you've, uh, <laughs> you've got a unique answer there. Yeah, my little geisha fan. Uh, last <laughs> little geisha fan. Last question <laughs> from the rapid fire section. Favorite dance floor secret weapon that you can uh, that you can mention? Oh, of uh, Charleston Boogie. Oh, by Robert Edwards. It, it's a remix by P I S K. Nice. Yeah, that's such a killer yeah. remix. I I open my sets with that one. I, th- I think it's pronounced Pisk. I think it is. I've been enjoying some of that recently as well. Yeah, he's good. Pisk is really good. Part of the swing growers, I think, isn't he? Yes. Which I recently found out. I didn't know that. Yeah. Banging, banging. I'll keep my eyes out oh, for that. You've just volunteered to uh, select my new opening tune for my next set. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it'll bring the house down. Trust me. You'll love it. <laughs> so I bet this is going to be hard to pin down. Like a standout gig from the last year or two. It doesn't have to be your favourite because I know it'll be hard to pick. What's one gig in the last year or so that really stands out? I think we did Pride for the first time last year, and it was incredible. It was in, a in sea Sunflat. of people. Yeah, it was in, in the, the city square, and they just block out several streets, and it was huge, and there were so many people, and the reaction to the electro swing was amazing. Like, I was so nervous. I thought, oh, God, I hope people... Cause it's just not a big thing here. And it was, it just, it was, it was very successful. It was, I love pride gigs. I absolutely adore them because you know, there's almost like they've already let go of their inhibitions just by being there. They're just there to have fun. And uh, I love it. You know, I love that. It's so good. So good. So, Oh good. So you've done pride gigs there. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure of the scale of them, but Manchester pride's pretty big and um, you know there's always there's always like a carnival beforehand and uh, i love the atmosphere in general you know it's just um just fantastic yeah nice what are your plans post quarantine what are you looking forward to most i'm looking forward to well i was planning on touring this album so i'm looking forward to maybe getting to tour (laughs) recovering some of the tour (laughs) yeah but we'll see we'll see how long that'll take other than that, I really want to see my parents. I, I've been away from them because I don't. I want to protect them, so I miss them and I want to go see them. So, ah, good well, that's answer. the first thing I'm going to do. Yeah, that's the first thing. Fair enough. That's a that's a good answer. And with you having obviously delayed the tour, do we expect more releases coming from you? Have you been hard at work, or have you been taking the opportunity to have a bit of downtime? I've been hard at work. Um, yeah, I, I just can't seem to stop producing. And now that there's this quarantine, <laughs> I'm going to have a whole other album ready to go for next year, maybe. Like so. animal. You're going to be touring with like three albums that haven't been heard yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, but I'll probably I'll probably not do it. The next release will probably just like an EP because the album is a lot of music at once, which I like to do. But uh, since I'm making so much now, I'll probably kind of just put them out little by little here. I like I like your logic. I like your logic. So um, that's all that we've got time for. There's not much left to to say other than thank you for taking the time to talk to us. And maybe if you want to give a shout out to where our listeners can hear your tunes, where they can uh, catch you up on social media. Oh yeah, we we're pretty active on Facebook, and uh, so it's just you know facebook.com slash speaker freaks. Um, our name is spelled different, um, but if you Google, if you Google, we, we, will speaker- link, we will link that. We'll link that. Oh, in that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we, we're not, I'm kind of active on Twitter, but not as much. We just, we, we mostly use Facebook. Yeah. That's the preferred choice. And then I welcome everyone to listen to us on Spotify or um, Apple music. 
those are the best places I think to hear us happy days mate happy days well listen thanks for taking the time to talk to us out of your busy thank production you. schedule <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me and I can't wait to have you in the UK mate it's going to be a, it's going to be a blast the uh, first awesome, James- yeah. first Jameson's on me alright I love it <laughs> catch you soon mate all the best alright you too take care what's that you say you gotta turn on the radio okay <laughs>